Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. I am Melvin, and today I would like to introduce someone who I've admired, played with, and thrilled to talk to. But first, let me say hello to my vivacious and beautiful co-host, Shirin Zemo, or Oz, as I like to call her. Hey, Oz. <laughs> Hi, Mel. You're too kind. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be joining you today. Um, and in today's episode, we bring all the footy fans a little treat. Um, we are excited to introduce you to a former Indian football captain, Mr. Frankie Barreto. Frankie is the recipient of the Kerkar Award and has played with some of the top Indian football clubs. He has also represented his national Indian football team in the Nehru Gold Cup, the SAF Cup, and Asian Games. And he works closely with the AIFC in grooming young Indian coaches. Frankie, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Melvin and Shane. So Frankie, uh, you've had a very successful football career for India at the club level. How has the game changed since then? Yeah, I could definitely say it has evolved a lot uh, since the time we have been playing. It's been more commercialized now. Football is not football anymore. It's more about money as well. The player development also has changed to more of scientific approach. So it's overall, it has changed a lot. Definitely, yes. Okay. And you have picked up football as a career at a time when sports was not necessarily uh, a coveted or a secure career. And football was definitely not as popular as cricket in India. So how did you make that choice? Seriously, even I don't know. <laughs> it was more of an accidental, uh, I, I can say I'm more of an accidental player. Uh, I never thought that I'll become a football player. Uh, till the age of 19, I used to play football, but it's just village football. Everyone plays that in Goa. Uh, but in, at the age of 19, I was in second year of my college and all my friends were in the the college football team. So I said, why don't I also give a try? Uh, I tried my luck, got selected for the college team, uh, played for the college team, got selected for the Goa University team. And I think that that's where I started thinking that, okay, I can take football as a career, probably try it. And I think success just came in year after year, year after year, I think. And I just took football as a career there only. Yeah. Frankie, having seen you at close quarters, I can definitely say that you're not an accidental player, okay? You're definitely, you have the gift for the game. You have the mind for it. But tell us a little bit more about how how was it uh, picking football as a career? Like, What were the challenges you faced, especially uh, coming from a country like India? Yeah, so football, to be, uh, again, taking football as a career, especially in India, is, is, is a gamble you can take. End of the day, you have to support your family, you have to pay your bills. Uh, and football is not someone will take uh, if you don't feel secure about it. Uh, but for me, I can say I was a bit lucky in terms of that. Uh, they said year after year, I was just gaining success. And uh, I think the hard work also pays uh, for it. I was, as I said, I joined Goa University team. Uh, from there, I got selected for a Vasco Sports Club team, which was the first division team there. And in the next, very next year, I got selected, I mean, got an offer from Tetchy Brothers. The very next oh. year, I got an offer from Salunka Sports Club. So I think I was just achieving success. And that made me feel secure with my, uh, as to take football as a career. But I know people, or I know players who were along with me, or who were in academies and all, and they were much better talented players than me, and then they couldn't make a career in football. So yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a gamble I took, and I think I was successful in that. Wow, yeah. So Frankie, you know, you mentioned that some players didn't get as lucky, or just looking at how it is right now, what would you say are the current challenges that the sport faces? To be in India, if I go in particular in India, yeah, there are, it's again still the same challenges you will face, uh, as I said. To take football is a gamble again. There are millions playing football uh, or trying to become football players, but not everyone will become a top-notch football player and get to be in the ISL teams or to be Indian team and, and, and make a life uh, out of it. Yeah, of uh, course. So it's still a gamble. It's still a gamble. And I think 
it will carry on it, it it's not going to stop there but that's that's a risk you have to take if you want to really be successful in a football career that's you true say yeah you can't be be scared uh, but one thing uh, and in villages like in goa and all the the security come first as as because most of the players if you want to make a football career they want to look after their family uh, they want to see an income coming in uh but that that also makes them a bit reluctant to take football as a career yeah those are the challenges still yeah and then especially now i'm coming from goa and and when we were playing for goa there were five first division football teams if i have to become a football player i had five options which i know mm-hmm. that if i get to a team i'll get a secured salary but now there's yeah. only one team which is there that is fc goa so there's so only one so it's very competitive yeah very competitive and very yeah. narrow you can say yeah well um i also know that you were uh, a skipper um so how did you motivate your team before a game did you have any specific pre-game rituals that you did i think it's all about uh, man management and it's, as long as you have the confidence of the players with you uh, you will get the you get the best out of it uh, i think you are as good as your players uh, and you have to depend on their performances as well if you want to look good uh, so i think it's how you how you manage them and how you deal with them and how you talk and get them into confidence and get the best performance out of them yeah so you didn't have any weird thing that you had to do before each game because not, if you don't do it it's bad luck <laughs> not really i was not that superstitious <laughs> <laughs> I, I think okay. Frankie is generally a man of few words so a uh, pre-game huddle will generally involve just letting the guys go out there and perform your best having been in one myself with uh, Frankie so Frankie you are still very much involved uh, with the game uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about your role uh, with uh, the Indian Football Federation uh, that you are working with right now yeah so i work with AIFC which is part of the uh, that's the all india football coaches association uh and they were closely with the iff uh, so what i i was appointed uh, as a member as a representative in the middle east uh, to just look after the uh, aifc chapter in the middle east so what i'm doing now is working with uh, young coaches or aspiring coaches indian coaches basically in uae or even in the middle east who wants to become coaches uh, so but the drawback for them is if they want to do a course a certified course from aiff they'll have to go back to india and get that done and they'll have to spend money to go back stay there for at least uh, a week or more depending on the course they are doing uh, which will be expensive for them uh, taking leave from work so the idea came to my mind that why don't i help these coaches to do this course here in dubai itself so i i organized two courses aiff fd license courses courses okay mm-hmm. which, which help to uh we had 48 candidates three unfortunately couldn't make it but there were 45 coaches now certified uh within uae oh. uh, and we had even we had even an indian coming from germany to do the course in dubai one from saudi coming to dubai to do the course so which helped them wow uh, mm-hmm. yeah i'm happy for doing that for them and supporting them okay and excellent are you planning to take up a coaching role anytime soon uh although i have a coaching license from f england football association i have not uh, taken that as a i've not thought about it to be honest uh, <laughs> but you never know future what will come <laughs> but i have an urge to do something for football in uae especially so never know uh, i might open up a small academy to help kids especially to uh, and if i do it i want to do it in such a way that there's a pathway created for the indian boys here in dubai or uae to be in the indian under 17 or under 15 or the senior teams uh, so there's a pathway created um so you were saying as a youngster in the uae um or or a coach you know is it very difficult or is it easier um for someone here to get into the indian national team so there are a couple of factors which don't i mean i, I don't say it it's Uh, coming in the way of them if they want to really take uh, football as a profession here in uae especially uh you can't be here in uae and be thinking of that i'll be playing for indian team it's very unlikely the reason is if you are an under 17 player and i know the, the fact that is during the under 17 world cup couple of years back uh aif had selections here in the uae for the uae guys to select uh, to see if there are potential who can make it to the under 17 team 
for the World Cup. Uh, they played in India, and there were two players who got selected, uh, uh, who were good and potential, uh, who were selected for the Pro Bowls, and they had to travel back to India. And they were, I think, they were from there. They were trying. They were supposed to go to Germany for a one month stint just for uh, training. Uh, but what I heard that was the two players selected here did not go along with the team because their parents didn't allow them because of their school. Oh, that's so that's some, yeah. So that's what. So I think uh, there are a couple of things. Like even if a senior, I, I, if I think of a, a, a mature player, say uh, after 21 or something, if they want to make a career in football in India, being in UAE might be difficult for him to get that attention or the exposure he might be needing uh, to get selected for the Indian team because there's not much opportunities for them here in UAE because he'll mm-hmm. play probably seven aside tournaments or might be playing a one eleven aside tournament, but the level will be not high enough to be uh, create that attention. He might right. or, or even she, I mean I can say even the girls, they'll have to be uh, relocating themselves in India, which may give them a better better possibility of making it in the Indian team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so this, uh, uh, Oz, if I could just uh, ask Frankie. So you just spoke about the uh, Under-17 World Cup uh, that took place. And I, I think India scored its first goal uh, at the World Cup uh, at uh, in the Under-17. So yeah. do you rate, you know, when I look at the current Indian senior team, do you think this is the best uh, Indian team you have seen? The Under-17 you're talking about? No, the senior team. Or the senior team. Uh, see, there might be a debate on this. Uh, everyone wants to say, if I want to say, I will say I, uh, the best team was when I was playing for India. But that's... that's <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 uh, I think it's, there's a lot of changes that has taken place from what we were playing to what now the, uh, the football is played now. It's more technical, more technical. Uh, there's lots of scientific approaches um, uh, around football now. So, I'll, I'll just go based on, I think, yes, I can see better football coming in now because I think of these, all these uh, uh, new technicalities. I think, yes, uh, yes, if you compare to football past to the current one, I think, yes, there, are, there, uh, there is improvement, basically. What can I say is there's, there's improvement in football, yeah. It's growing. It's growing and it's improving. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Frankie, also you mentioned <laughs> how obviously football m- was better when you were playing. Um, to to look back on that, could you tell us your proudest moment as a player? I think my proudest moment will be the captaining the Salgunta team and lifting the uh, Federation Cup in '97, uh, and this was against East Bengal. Out of 170, uh, oh, sorry, 107,000, more than 107,000. Uh, in the stadium, and they were all East Bengal supporters, and we played against the supporters, 107 more than 107,000 supporters, and we lifted the Federation Cup in Kolkata in 1997. Nice. So that might that's the proudest moment I can say. Yeah. Okay, but that's I a moment think, uh, do you want to? Uh, I'm sure that was the proudest moment for you, probably as a skipper, but. Uh, how about that 35-year goal that you scored against Bengal? Yeah, that was in Goa. Where I played for the under-21 team, and it was the final match against Bengal again. Yeah, and uh, Goa and Bengal were in the final. Uh, I don't know where the power and energy came that day, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we 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 got a free kick at 35 yards, and I told the captain, "I, I want to take this free kick." I took the free kick. It was a hard shot with big big goalkeeper. Uh, and yeah, I think that was one of the moments, I think this was the end of the season tournament, which we played. And I remember after the tournament, I had offers from almost all the clubs in Goa. Uh, wow. Goa. So, so yeah. uh, do you think, uh, you know, India can match up to the rest of the world in football anytime soon? Uh, I, I won't use the word soon. But if they work hard and if they continue doing what they're doing and if the pathway is proper, they do a good proper roadmap and have a better ecosystem in Goa to develop football, yes, they can. Uh, because that's what we need is is better ecosystem uh, okay. for producing players from a younger age. So, okay. yeah, there is hope, yeah. So, uh, not too dissimilar to uh, cricket, uh, because the cricket, the grassroots levels, they have really invested heavily yeah. in, and you can see it by the number of players that are coming up, yeah. that the system is turning. Okay. 
Yes. So, Frankie, if I can get you to current times, okay, we've played together a few times, and uh, you've still uh, managed to be among the fittest players around. So, uh, tell us uh, about your fitness and diet regime. <laughs> Share your secrets. I, I don't have a particular diet as such, to be uh, to be honest. But then I think it's it, I have to be lucky with my genes. I guess I don't put on weight uh, okay. frequently. Uh, but yes, I do play football thrice a week. Uh, I think that's probably keeping me fit. Uh, and I also, if time permits, I go for a gym in the building. So I do sometimes go to the gym as well. Okay. So you don't particularly watch your diet or are you just careful about what you eat? Seriously, no. I just eat anything. What is <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I wish everyone had that constitution where he could just eat whatever you want and still... Um, be so well, I mean, he's going to play three times a week and he still goes to the gym. So I feel like that probably contributes a lot probably, yeah. to the staying fit. Okay. So, uh, Frankie, uh, you know, who were your role models uh, growing up? To be as I said to you, I was never thinking of becoming a football player. So I never thought of, or I didn't have an idea uh, to be following someone. Okay. But yes, growing up, I definitely like watching Maradona, uh, Franco Barisi. Uh, Maldini, I think I, I really enjoyed watching them yeah, play. Okay, and uh, assuming you picked up something from these, what do you attribute your success to, both as a player and uh, you know now in your current role? I think it's about hard work, and I think how much you can commit to it. Uh, and I think my family supported me always in what I do. Hard work. And I think that pays you well. Yeah. No substitute to it. That's true. Um, so, Frankie, as everyone has suffered this year with COVID-19, I'm sure you've had some struggles as well, you know, not being able to go play and stuff. Um, how did you keep yourself busy during this awful, awful pandemic? I, know, I, I think I was just training at home, uh, doing some exercises within the yeah, confine of the room. I had... Uh, cycle at my home so I use that a lot but then yes I think we started playing in May end of May something when the restrictions were a little bit eased and Mm -hmm. we started playing back football yeah okay and uh, did you conduct uh, anything for AIFC during this time no uh, we did yeah I did uh, webinars Uh, we did uh, two days webinar for the coaches I think it's yeah, two weekends, two, two days, yeah, no, Friday, Saturday, yeah, two days of webinars for the coaches, okay. uh, which oh. were again represented by, uh, I think Melvin joined as well. Uh, right. So it um, was, yeah. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, so, um, to stay on the topic of the pandemic, um, I'm assuming you, you know, you were cooped up with your family for a while, but um, to talk about your family a little bit, um, you have two kids, if I'm not mistaken? I do. I do. Yes. Yeah, so uh, how did they f- Oh, nice. Um so how do they feel about having a football star as a dad? Uh I don't think I'm being treated as a star at home. I'm just a normal father <laughs> to them. <laughs> uh yeah, but yes, uh uh, they were born after I retired for, for, from football, so they have not seen me playing. Uh, but I take a couple of a um, couple of times I've taken my son to see. Uh, just when I'm uh, when I'm going to play, he came to watch me, and he's like, "Dad, you're not running. What are you doing?" There? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have they got oh, into yes. football as well? Uh, he likes sports. Uh, I hope he takes it, uh, but no, uh, no pressure on him. Definitely no pressure. But one thing they do is they, I, when they watch a couple of my videos playing football, the olden one, and if I show them the photos as well, they, they laugh a lot at me because of my thick moustache and long hair. That's the best <laughs> thing they do. Yeah. So they just make fun of you, basically. Yeah. No support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and... I also want to know what would be your advice to some aspiring young footballers? I think don't dare to dream big, be ambitious uh, and work hard. If you're destined, you'll definitely achieve success. Simple. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really great advice. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you think there's some sort of pattern or formula to becoming successful in sports? Or is it work hard, purely work hard, luck? Work hard. 
yeah. and, and yeah, definitely you need a little bit of luck. So I can talk about myself. Uh, as I told earlier, I started yeah. football at the age of 19 and I was lucky enough as well. That's luck favored me. I can say, yes, but then there's no substitute to hard work. Okay, so you worked hard, you made it big in football. Uh, how did you choose or why did you choose Dubai as your next uh, destination to move? To? Uh, I think it's one of my close friends. Uh, he was managing Varka Sports Club here. Okay. Uh, so you know the village football going on here. So, so I think his aim was to bring me back when I retired to play, probably make him make me play into his team, and alternately find a job here so I can play longer for his team. So, uh, that was his objective, and then I mine was to just find a job here, and I think both worked simultaneously. I I was lucky to find a job here when I came here in 2003, and. Within one two months, I found a nice job, uh, and I and then I started playing as well village football, the village tournaments, and plus the other social football. So I kept myself busy with that as well. Yeah. I think that was a decision. I could just yeah come and try Dubai. Everyone was talking highly about Dubai. Yeah. No regrets. No regrets. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, I have one more question on the topic. So you said you got a job. Um, I also know that your previous assignment was as a manager at uh, student services at University of Wollongong. Um, how did, um, you know, what did that entail? Uh, so I was looking at most of the non-academic side of the students at the university. So my job was to manage the uh, student career development, residencies, transportation, uh, sports, clubs and events, health, that's the medical center, then the counseling center, uh, then the bookshop, uh, then also provide support to them academically. So those were the departments I was managed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lucky to have you, Frankie. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, so now we have come to the segment of our show where we will ask you some rapid fire questions and you just give us the first thing that comes to mind. So it's a little okay. bit of like a game show part of our show, just a little fun. Yeah. Um, Mel, take it away. Okay, so I'm going to start with three questions to you, Frankie. I'm going to give you names of players, uh, two names, and you've got to pick one, okay? Okay. Okay. Pele or Maradona? Maradona. Baichung Bhutia or I am Vijayan? That's a tricky one. <laughs> but uh, I am Vijayan, yeah. You, have you played with I am Vijayan? I played with both of them, yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, and but the both one are separate, uh, different, yeah. Both have different uh, players, yeah. Both, both superstars players, in their yeah. own right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Absolutely. Right. Okay, and the one question that's on everyone's mind right now Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel when you heard about, you know, him uh, wanting to leave Barcelona team? I know, it, I'd probably it must be his decision. Uh, we don't know what's going on inside their club, uh, definitely. Uh, but then it might be his decision. There, yeah, but there was a lot of rumors that he was just fed up of losing. <laughs> and he blamed the team. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's also, they said, there's a rift between the management and the team. So, that's, you don't know. Yeah. That's true. Okay, your current favorite football team? Uh, I do watch a lot of Bayern Munich now mm -hmm. uh, and, and Manchester City. Okay, cool. A um, little off topic. Uh, what is your favorite cuisine? Go on. <laughs> that, was, that was like right off the bat. <laughs> no thought process. <laughs> and last but not least, your all-time favorite football player? Maradona. Maradona, it is. Okay, thank you, Frankie. Now, before we wrap up, uh, we would like to do our green pill moment. So, yeah. for your green pill moment, I'm going to ask you, if you had a chance to go back in the past, would you do anything differently? No, I think I'll, I'll thousand times I'll follow the same thing. You make the exact same choices? Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense for someone who's had a successful career well, that's like true. yours. Uh, so thank you so much, Frankie, for sharing My your pleasure. fantastic thank and you inspiring so much. Uh, story. My pleasure. 
Yeah. And I'm sure uh, our audience is going to enjoy this uh, conversation and keep up the good work with uh, AIFC, Frankie. We look forward to seeing you in a coaching role sometime soon. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah. And thank, thank you very you. much for having me. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. We wish you all the best. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Shirin. Thanks, Melvin. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.